Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday. It is the last day, the 31st day of January 2022. Happy Monday. I hope you are healthy and COVID free today. I hope that your family is also healthy and COVID free and that you enjoyed your weekend. I hope that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, and health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field along with the first responders who every day have a mission to save lives. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us, keep our streets and sidewalks clean, and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on those trying to help deliver and rescue the victims of child prostitution and prostitution, child pornography and pornography, child molestation and pedophilia, human trafficking and sex slavery. Blessings upon those trying to help deliver and rescue these victims and double curses on the profiteers and the perverts who traffic in this misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions with our roof over their head, including those who were swept away like garbage in California, in Inglewood, because the Super Bowl is coming. Blessings upon them and those that are trying to help them. For theirs is the kingdom. Tonight, a basketball game will be played at Madison Square Garden. It's interesting, the team that the Knicks are playing, the Sacramento Kings. We'll get into that in a second. But I wanted to share with you something I've been kind of telling you the whole time that Tom Thibodeau has been here. Is that if you really listen to him, he says a lot without saying much. He says a lot without saying much, but most people are so frustrated, including myself. You get frustrated in things that he does and how he does them that, you know, you can't really think or see clearly what's going on all the time. And he said something very subtly. I don't think he even meant to let that cat out the bag, but he did Uh, to let us know, confirm to us exactly what's getting ready to happen in the next 11 days. Let me let me play the clip for you. And again, it has to do, it, the, the litmus for all of this is Cam Reddish. The acquisition of Cam Reddish. And there were questions uh, as to how much Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau communicated, not only with Cam Reddish, but in, in general terms, with the moves that Leon Rose was making in the front office. And so, in the process of time, we have learned, for example, that Tom Thibodeau was not consulted when they went and signed Kemba Walker or when they went and signed Evan Fournier. These are not players that he wanted. This is very important as we're going to hear what he had to say after the loss to the Bucks this past weekend. Now, we want to talk about the Bucks game as well, but listen to what he had to say. Because I told you before the game, it almost was irrelevant. They might win, they might lose, but now we're going to understand some more with some more clarity what's about to happen. So first, let's listen to as he's asked about Cam Reddish. Uh, Regarding Cam Reddish, I mean, you guys gave up a first round pick for Reddish. Is there is there like when that trade happens and he's not in the rotation right now? Is there is there communication with the front office about? Like, uh, prerogatives when you give up a guy, give up a first round pick for a guy like that, or is it just purely? Yeah, no, everything was discussed, you know. First of all, he said, everything was discussed. So, Tom Thibodeau was involved with the acquisition of Cam Reddish. He said, everything was discussed. That's number one. You have to also remember, Cam Reddish asked for a trade last summer. He, his representative himself went to the Atlanta management, asked quietly, asked for a trade, and they gave the reason that he wanted an expanded role or an opportunity to play an expanded role on a team. And he didn't feel like he was going to get that in Atlanta. 
The New York Knicks have this, uh, so far we know. Now, Leon, Tom, discussed this. And they acquired Cam Reddish. Now, the media is making a big deal out of the fact that Cam Reddish is not in the rotation. And I told y'all, you shouldn't make any judgments till after the 10th of February. Tom is about to tell you why. Listen closely. You know, we, we like we like who he is. We like the, the talent. And right now, you know, it, it's, it's a long season. We knew we were, you know, we traded someone who wasn't in the rotation. So, you know, you can't keep adding to without taking someone out. Did you hear what he said? He said, we traded, we like him, obviously. We traded him for somebody that wasn't in the rotation. And you can't keep adding two without taking someone out. There's your answer right there. Then he quickly said again, well, it's a long season. No, it's not a long season. The Knicks have played right now what? Did they play 50 games yet? I think they have played. Let's see. The Knicks have played 49 games. There's only 33 games left. This is not a long season now. It's less than half the season. Okay, but that's his line to cover up what he knows is going on. So now, let me tell you, Kemba and Fournier are gone. They're going to be gone. Okay, and it's not, it's not because, and you want to know why Tom keeps trotting out that five? Let's take a step back and understand what's going on here. Tom and Leon have known each other a long time. Leon's company used to represent Tom. Still does, I believe. Or now Leon's former company. Okay? So they know each other. World Wide West, Tom, Leon, they know each other. Calipari, they know each other. Why do you think you got so many Kentucky players playing prominent roles on this team? Okay? That being the case, When Leon Rose makes a move to bring in a New York-born guy, Kemba Walker, former All-Star, and he signs Evan Fournier to $54 million. how would it look if Tom sat both of them? How would it look to, on Leon Rose if Tom sat both of them? So Tom has no choice but to play these guys. He was, he, he was frustrated, and if you remember, in the beginning of the season, he was so frustrated with Fournier's performance, he wasn't playing him in the fourth quarter. He was sitting him. Remember that? He was sitting Fournier the whole fourth quarter. And Fournier, if you remember, was giving him attitude about it. And then now Fournier started playing better, and he put him in in the fourth quarter. Remember, he sat Kemba, as I thought he would, but there was a huge backlash. Including some that were intimating that maybe Leon and Dolan talked to Tom about that. He sat three weeks. The record didn't get any better. And he put him back in the rotation. But it wasn't Tom's choice, these two. So he just said, we liked Cam. And I was consulted. We already know Cam Wants to be traded because what? He wants to be in a rotation. He wants an opportunity to start. He They asked me, he said, I think I could be a star in this league. And now Tom says very plainly, listen again, very plainly. So, you know, you can't keep adding to without taking someone out. You can't keep adding to without taking someone out. Kemba and Fournier and I, I suggest Burks probably gone. And you're going to see Cam Reddish, Quentin Grimes move up into that rotation. Not only that, Tom's good friend, Jeff Van Gundy. I, I was listening to him on SNY over the weekend. What would you do, Jeff? He was asked. I would play Grimes 55 minutes if I can. I think Tom feels the same way. But he can't do it because his boy and his superior, 
sign Evan Fournier for $54 million. Okay? So he's got to play these guys. He's got to. And he already tested the waters in not playing them. And we saw what happened. Okay? So now you have a situation where Tom is telling you, I'm going to keep playing them until you remove them. You brought this mess here? Take it out of here. Now, Tom likes Burks. But listen carefully. Burks is the most valuable veteran as far as trade value in the rotation. And his salary is movable. This is why the Don re-signed all of those guys. You talk again, Noel, Nerlens Noel, uh, uh, Alec Burks, okay, Kemba Walker, Derek Rose, Taj Gibson, all of them are signed to movable contracts. All of them. They can move all those contracts. Okay? And they will. Now, I'm not sure about Nerlens. Derek Rose is staying. He's going to be here. He's only here. He's only got a two-year deal. He's going to be here. Okay? He's not going nowhere. Not only that, he won't even be available to after the All-Star break. He's going to be available. I mean, he's going to be here. He's not going nowhere. I doubt Taj goes anywhere because these are two of Tom's favorite players. Not only that, let me give you some more news. And I'm not giving you what I'm thinking. I'm telling you what's out there. By, by credible sources like Ian Begley or Shams or Rose. Atlanta wanted Quentin Grimes. They wanted Quentin Grimes, which I would have asked for too if I'm Atlanta, for Cam Reddish. Again, Tom was consulted. The Knicks said, no, no way. We're not giving you Quentin Grimes. And we know that Tom pushed. These are media reports that we know. Tom pushed for Grimes and McBride. He pushed for those two guys. Right now at the point guard spot, you got Kemba Walker, Derek Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, Alec Burks, and Deuce McBride. Okay. So Burks, Fournier, Walker. That's it. They're done. They're not going to be here. I'm like 90% sure them three guys are going by or by the trade deadline. Okay. Now, that leaves the next thing that Ian Begley brought up. It was about two weeks ago. Ian Begley said, I doubt that somebody asked me, are they going to be buyers or sellers? And he said, I doubt they'll be sellers. He said, things have to really get bad for them to be sellers. They'll probably be buyers at the trade deadline. But then he changed his tune this weekend. And he said, this is Ian Begley now. He said, the Knicks have to make a decision within the next few days about Julius Randle. So percentage wise, I'm about 80% or higher that Burks, Fournier, and Kemba. It's like, I'm 80% on Fournier because he's playing well. But he's just, his problem is he's in the way of Grimes and Cam. They play the same position. And so I'm 80% sure he'll be gone in the next 11 days. But I'm, I'm almost 100% sure Kemba and Burks are going to be moved. Okay? But it's 50-50 on Randall. 50-50. It's interesting that the Kings are coming into town tonight. Now, over the last eight days, the Kings, eight days ago, the Kings got blown out. And that's an understatement by the Celtics. By 50, They lost by 53 points. One of the worst beatings. I, I have to say, probably top 10 beatings in NBA history. But then I watched the game they played Saturday night against Philly. Um, Saturday night against Philly, uh, they played very well. And this is what happened on Saturday night. They lost by two. They were up most of the game. And Philly and them came back because they, you know, they, Sacktown was a young team. Sacktown started Halliburton and they started Davion Mitchell at the guard spots. 
They started Rashawn Holmes. They started Harrison Barnes. And they started Marvin Bagley at the power forward. And Halliburton had 38 and seven assists. I think he even, like, he stuffed the stat sheet, man. It was ridiculous. He had, let me look at this. He had, yeah, 38 points, seven assists, three rebounds, three steals. He only had two turnovers. He was 11 to 12 from the line. They're not trading him. They got him on a rookie deal. Okay? He's on a rookie deal. Davion Mitchell had 15 points. He was 3 of 7 from 3, 6 of 14 from the field, 5 of 6, 3 rebounds. Now, it's all, Ian Begley already reported the Kings were interested in Julius Randle. It's already been reported that they're interested in dealing Harrison Barnes. What drove us to create the most rugged? They're already interested in dealing Harrison Barnes. Okay? So, let's look at this. Let's remember. De'Aaron Fox is, is Kentucky. Now, some of y'all brought up some really good points when I mentioned De'Aaron Fox last week. Because I was like not very high on him. I'm very protective of Deuce McBride. But you, some of you brought up some excellent points. And I always acknowledge when I feel like a point is excellent. You made from, from y'all, my Knicks Nation subscribers. By the way, I want to thank y'all because just by the way, um, I'm almost at 6,000 subscribers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll be passing that in the next few weeks. But wow, that's amazing. And I want to thank y'all for that. That's up. That's y'all doing this. You know, it's not me. So I want to thank y'all for that. I'm, uh, really, thank you very much. I praise the most high for you, but, um, yeah, that's that's a side thing. Um, but remember, De'Aaron Fox is Kentucky. And some of y'all brought up the point that his defense will improve under Tom Thibodeau. And you know what? That is true. And he's still young. I think he's 24, man. And so that's, wow. And you know what? He's not even close to his prime yet. So you can expect his shooting could improve. He did shoot one year. He shot 37% from three. So if he... I think he's a guy that can improve. What I like about De'Aaron Fox the most of all that is that he is a guy for the big game. He, he is a big day, game type of kid. He shows up. Madison Square Garden would, would light him up. He would, he would, to me, he's one of them cats that would ball under the lights of Madison Square Garden. He's not going to fold. He's not going to be doing that, this and tripping. He's going to ball under the lights of Madison Square Garden. Okay, you're going to see the best in him. He would do, you know, like a Latrell game or, you know, like something like that. Like, I'm going to come in ball. I don't care who's watching type of thing. That's what I mean. You know, or like a, like LaMelo ball. You know, he's, he's not, he, the bigger the stage, I think he, the better he will be. So I bring that up to say it's 50 50. And if it happens, it's going to be with the Kings. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that, but it's going to either be picks with Harrison Barnes. Or it's going to be De'Aaron Fox. If the Knicks trade for De'Aaron Fox, De'Aaron Fox is, is making the neighborhood of $30 million, you know, over the course of his contract. He signed a five-year, $163 million deal, a max contract for uh, off a rookie deal. You would need two. You would need, because Julius is making 20 this year. So you'd need two, set, two players. So Burks and Julius would be perfect. You know, from what I saw, with, with uh, the Kings, they start Julius at the power forward. They have Buddy Hell coming off the bench, and you have Hell with Burks. Now that's a tremendous uh, rotation right there, leading their second unit. Um, they're they're actually very close to being a real a good team. They're very close to doing that. They in a, a piece like a Julius being their second, and he would be he would not be the first option because Halliburton's got the ball, right? If they, if they did a trade like that, if they traded Julius, it would be Julius Randle and Alec Burks for De'Aaron Fox. Um, Halliburton would have the ball. He has it now. Okay. Mitchell also. Julius would be second, third option, which would be perfect for him. In that scenario, they would keep Harrison Barnes and play him at the small forward. Cause he's, he could play either forward spot. And so, and of course, Rashad Holmes, I've always admired him. Rough neck type of center. You know, not a, Big rim protector in terms of length, but a rough neck 
tough type of center that you don't want to be messing with every night, you know. So that would make them a much better team, I think. And then on the Knicks, you'd end up with, and I'm going to tell you, if they do a deal like that, let me throw another thing in there to confuse you. If they do a deal like that, I expect Thaddeus Young to somehow end up on the Knicks. Thaddeus Young is an expiring contract, $14 million. I don't know how Leon will pull it off. That's up to him. But he would be perfect because now you start Obi Toppin and you have Thaddeus Young in Mob D in a, in a year where he's expiring. Okay. Or you stop Thaddeus Young. I, I mean, I don't like that idea, but Tom might. Then you keep Obi and Mob D. But, um, yeah, that's what you'd have. I, you see probably Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, RJ Barrett along the front line. Quentin Grimes and Darren Fox. Now that's then you still have your mob. You still got eventually you're gonna have your Derrick Rose IQ. Uh, if it'll be Thaddeus Young, you'd still have that. And then of course Cam Reddish. Now Deuce would not be in that rotation because he still you got you'd have Fox, Rose, um, IQ, and Deuce. He'd be the fourth guy, and he probably would not be in that rotation. Deuce has probably got to be where he is. In that scenario, until Rose is done with his two year contract, because Rose has got a two year deal. Okay. So, uh, Deuce would probably be the odd man out in that scenario, but that would be still a formidable team. Now, if they traded Julius Randle for Harrison Barnes, that'd be a straight up deal. They would probably throw in some picks. Uh, let me see what Harrison Barnes' uh, contract is. Hold on. Because if I don't know how, how many years are left. On his contract. Hold on one second. Let's find out. Uh, Harrison Barnes. We're going to find out what's left on his contract. So he signed a four year. $85 million deal. He is. This is the third year of that contract. He is actually after 22, 23. So he's got one more year and he's unrestricted. He's 29 years old. He's got one more year and he's unrestricted. That means we'd have him next year and he'd be an expiring next year, which is stuff I'm sure Leon Rose likes. So if they did it that way, they would take picks and Harrison Barnes for Julius Randle straight up. The other guys would still be moved. They'd just be moved to other teams. That would be that. And, and now Harrison Barnes either starts or he plays behind Obi, but they split minutes at the four. Okay. That's how that would work. Um, yeah, that's how that would work. Now, uh, Barnes, you know, <laughs> he's not a superstar, but he's definitely a solid, solid, uh, NBA player. He is a career 14 point scorer. Um, right now in his last few years, he's been in that 18, 16, 18 range. Um, He's a very, he's, he shoots 41% from three. He's always been a pretty efficient three point shooter, 38 for the career. He's shooting 41 this year, 83% from the line. Um, solid player, just a solid all around player. He's a good complimentary rotation piece. Um, he would not be the number one option, which would be great. You know, so now you'd have, um, if in that scenario, you'd have RJ Barrett be the number one option. You know, and then you'd have Quentin Grimes, Harrison Barnes, you know, and, and in that scenario, we trade in Kemba. Now you temporarily Deuce would be in the rotation because until the Rose got back. Okay. And so that's another scenario, but it's 50 50. All of that, I say with Julius Randle, I said 50 50. It's he, there's a 50% chance he stays and a 50% chance he's traded. Okay. Um, I could see them keeping him for now because even though they're going to play the kids, they still want to make a playoff run or at least a play in run. That's what they want to do, I believe. So I think they would think that Randall would be instrumental in that. Not only that, you got to remember too, if they did these moves, which I think, like I said, I think the other three guys are going to be moved. And so if that's the case, you're bringing in kids that have not played together. You know, you need a training camp, really, and you need time for these kids to get to know each other and play together like that. So if you moved Fournier and Kemba and Alec Burks, and now you're going to be 
left with, you know, if you started say Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, um, RJ Barrett, Quentin Grimes, and IQ. Now that's a nice squad. They know each other, but they haven't meshed together, you know, as a unit. Although they have, that squad has played second unit ball together. So it's, it's not that crazy, but I would, I would expect them to take a little time to really gel. Um, and they need a training camp. So you get this year and then next year. That's the only thing, but I think they would keep Randall for that, you know, and just hopefully let him play through this, whatever he's dealing with stuff in his head. Um, he would not, obviously he's not, he's not the number one option now. It's RJ. He's not the number one option now. It's RJ right now. Um, but he's really that lackadaisical attitude that he was showing with prior to last year is there, man. It was, it's been there most of his career. It was just last year that he didn't have it, which is what surprised me. There were many times I used to, he used to disgust me as a basketball player because he would just not care on defense. And I've seen that again this year. It's very inconsistent. And then when he does care, his IQ is so low, he makes some dumb moves on the defensive end and leaves the Knicks vulnerable. So it's 50-50. I really don't know what's going to happen with Julius Randle, but I'm pretty sure Kemba, Fournier, and Burks will not be New York Knicks in 11 days. Okay. Um, so it's interesting that they are playing the Kings tonight because it's like, that kind of karma thing happens. I remember right before the Carmel Anthony deal, we played Denver in the garden. And I think it went to the last second or overtime or something. And we lost like, like, I think, um, stat shot a shot. No, that was against Boston, but it, it, we beat, we beat them, uh, at the end of that game. And then the trade happened not too far after that. It was, that was weird karma. And I think I'm feeling, I'm feeling like that now that the Kings are coming in. 11 days before the trade deadline, you know, so uh, we're going to see, we're going to see what happens. This is going to be interesting, but I'm, like I said, I can see these other guys going and some of y'all are worried about moving Fournier's contract. Look, it could be moved. Um, and there are teams that will need him. For example, um, do you guys know that um, Utah starting shooting guard, Joe Ingles just broke his leg this weekend. He's done for the season. He might be done for his career. He's an older guy on an expiring deal. Okay. They're not going to, they could, they have, um, they have, uh, oh, what's this kid's name in Utah? He, the sixth man of the year. They have this guy that was the sixth man of the year. Uh, the Filipino young man. I forgot his name. Hang on. Um, Jordan Clarkson, but they don't like to start him. They like, like we like, like Tom likes D Rose on Mob Deep. They like Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench. So they need a starting shooting guard um, or at least a backup to English because Donovan Mitchell couldn't play. I, I see Fournier fitting there. And in fact, I see Fournier fitting in pretty much all the teams that are in the running in the West um, that are not at the top of the pile. So not Phoenix, not Golden State, not Memphis, but Utah, Denver. Dallas, the Clippers, Minnesota, even the Lakers or Portland, I see moves can be made to get an Evan Fournier to one of those teams. And we could take back, you know, a player and expiring deals also from those teams. So he could be moved. And I'm not even looking at the East because I'm assuming Leon would send him to the West. But, you know, you still you got um, in the East, I say Milwaukee, Cleveland really could use it because they just signed Rondo to a mineral, a, a vet mineral, but they just lost Rondo at 17, uh, Rondo, um, they lost, uh, Ricky Rubio, 17 million, which is the same amount of money that Evan makes. So, like I said, he could be moved. Um, and it's very easy to move Alec Burks and it's very easy to move Kemba Walker because even if there's no market for Kemba, his salary is such that they could buy him out. You know, they could really just buy him out and, and that'd be that. And then he could sign a vet minimum and try to make a run on a championship team. Okay. So they could either trade him or buy him out. But uh, these guys are going to be moved. They're going to go with Cam Reddish and Quentin Grimes. 
Okay, and they're coming up the rear, Deuce McBride, depending. If they go get a point guard, I don't think they're going to get, I'm, I'm now less confident in them getting Jalen Brunson because of the number that he's asking for. He's looking for 20 million. Apparently, both Dallas and Detroit are willing to pay him that. I don't understand why Detroit would do it. I don't get it because Detroit last night, they just beat, um, who they just beat last night? Detroit just beat Cleveland. They just beat Cleveland last night. And uh, it was a tremendous comeback. Kay Cunningham is the deal. And I told y'all he was going to be the deal. He's the deal. And him, they started him, Corey Joseph, and Killian Hayes, three guards. Along with Isaiah Stewart and Sadiq Bey. And, man, they was playing some ball last night. And they were down 15 going into the fourth quarter. And Cade took over. <laughs> Cade and Sadiq, they both took over. Um, and man, so I don't know like why they would need a Brunson because they got the guard spot is set. Cade is that dude. He could play the point, the two. Uh, he did all that last night. He could guard, uh, he guarded the threes. He guarded fours. He guarded twos. He guarded one. He was, he had a triple double and he's only like 19. <laughs> He's going to be something else. So they are rebuilding nicely. I'm not sure why they would want a Jalen Brunson unless they're going to send out Killian. I, I don't know. But anyway, I heard Detroit is willing to pay him the $20 million And Dallas is willing to pay him the $20 million. Okay? Um, so I don't want to pay him $20 million. I'd rather have the Aaron Fox if I'm going to have that much money out there. Give me the Aaron Fox. You know, 24 years old, all-star level. Or NBA level player. Okay. I'll take him. Um, I know Brunson is good. I'm not saying Brunson's not good, but I got Brunson already in Deuce. So I'm not paying Brunson 20 million to be Deuce at 900,000. See? So anyway, that's, I don't think the Knicks, if they, if that's his number, the Knicks are not going to get him. If that's his number. If he really wants 20 million, it'd be a mistake for the Knicks game. I don't think Leon's going to do that. So I see more of a Darren Fox possibility because of Ju if they're going to trade Julius, then um, Brunson. Okay, so here, here we go. Here we go, y'all. And this the Knicks got a murderous schedule. The, coming up, their their schedule is murderous. I mean, they got. Let me see here. Um, they this is no joke. They 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 tonight at the Garden. Okay, they got the Garden against Sacramento. And then they're at the Garden against Memphis, who's now one of the top teams in the West. Okay, period. I mean, you know you got John Morant, but they're going Desmond Bain, who we really liked. <laughs> He's killing. Okay, and then the rest of their crew, they got a solid team. They play really good defense. And, of course, Jaron Jackson Jr., they got a good team, man. And they playing really good defense. They coming into the garden, and Ja is another one of them dudes, man. And you get him under them garden lights, and he's going to want to score 50. So that's going to be tough. Tom's going to try out the same team till they make those trades. He's not going to make – he's going to try out the same five. That's why I, I was like, what is he doing? Everybody was like, what is he doing, right? Then yesterday when he said that, I said, okay, now it all makes sense. Tom, he's telling Leon, you signed these guys. You brought these guys in here. I'm going to play them till you move them. That's how he do it. Oh, you want the youth to play? You better, you can't, you said what he, you can't just add, let me let me say it again. You can't just add players without subtracting somebody. You can't do that. Talent, and right now, you know, it's, it's, it's a long season. We knew we were, you know, we traded someone who wasn't in the rotation. So, you know, you can't keep adding two without taking someone out. Leon? Don't think he ain't got that memo. So, Tom, I'm telling you. I ain't asked for these two cats. Oh, you want me to play Grimes and Cam? Okay. We can't keep adding two without taking somebody out. He going to keep trotting this five out there. He'll trot Kemba out there on one leg. Because this is what he wants. <laughs> so.
So there you go. So now they got Los Angeles at Los Angeles, at Utah, at Denver, at Golden State, at Portland. Um, before the All Star, but before the trade deadline, you got Sacramento, Memphis at home, the Lakers at Lakers, at Utah, at Denver, and then on February 10th at Golden State. This is going to get ugly. Leon's going to make some moves. This is going to get ugly. It is. So Leon's going to make some moves. Um, that's going to happen. We're going to see what moves, but the only 50 50 to me, like I said, is Julius. I don't know. It's 50% he could stay, 50% he could go. I don't know. And whether he goes out for Harrison Barnes and picks or, um, De'Aaron Fox, him and Burks for De'Aaron Fox. I don't know. Cause, and I say that because De'Aaron Fox is not officially on the market. Harrison Barnes is. Okay. They haven't really put, Philly was talking about De'Aaron Fox and Halliburton. Then the Kings backed out and said, forget it. We're not, we're going to do business elsewhere. That was the word that they used. Uh, that was the word that Shams used. It was either Shams or Woke. Said, no, they decided to do business and the quote was elsewhere. Well, here they are and elsewhere today. You want to see what happens. But now it helps me understand Tom's modus operandi, if you will. He's telling Leon, oh, I'm going to pray. You, you brought these cats in here. You signed them all this money. I'm playing. Them. Now, with regard to Julius, that's a separate issue. Leon's gonna make a decision there. Tom would probably keep Julius. Even with the sauntering back on defense, even with not helping his teammates up from the floor, even with his attitude, Tom would probably keep him. And yet, let me just explain to you where Tom Thibodeau's coming from. I'm not justifying it. But you know how this started? With his mentor. It started with his mentor. Who's his mentor? One of his mentors was Jeff Van Gundy. I don't know if y'all remember, but Patrick Uni was a daggone prima donna. Y'all remember that? Now, Patrick Union would never shy away from the media. He would never do that. So I'm not comparing him in that way. But Patrick Union got treated with kid gloves. I would see, and how Jeff and the gun used to do it. Tom Thibodeau would always be cursing up. You know, he's cursing and yelling at everybody so you, everybody can hear. Jeff and Gundy didn't do it like that. He would walk up on the player and get in his face quietly, but you could see him, you know, intensely in that dude's face. He never did it to Ewing, ever. Patrick was sitting at the end of the bench too. And, and in fact, there was interviews that had been done by ex players from that era. And they would all say, yeah, Patrick was, you know, he was, he was a prima donna man. And so Thibodeau treats his dudes like that. Rose, Taj, Jimmy Butler, Julius Randle. The number one option that's the veteran. That guy's going to get away with murder under Tom Thibodeau, which is another reason I think we should probably, we, that's one of the reasons I, I lean on that side sometimes. Move, move him. Take that blanket away. Let somebody else, then, let, then you're going to see Tom getting everybody's butt. Except IQ. But anyway. <laughs> Except IQ, D Rose, and Taj, basically. But them all hustle, at least. You know, Julius, anyway, it's 50 50. So we're going to see what happens here. Now, I, like I'm telling you, it's going to happen soon. At any moment, this could happen. The only thing about Julius, we got to wait till February 3rd. Well, let me tell you something. February 3rd is this Thursday. This Thursday is February 3rd. That's after that day, Julius could be moved. Okay? So that's this Thursday. And all things are going to happen between this Thursday and a week from Thursday, which is the deadline. That's how close we are, y'all. You're going to see some moves quickly. No pun intended. Which is another reason why, speaking of quickly, I don't think we get Brunson because I think Dallas, if they made the move now, they would ask for IQ and the Knicks ain't giving up IQ. That ain't happening. Mm -mm. So, no. That's what I'm saying. They, they, they would rather probably go give up Julius than give up IQ. I'm telling you right now. You know, IQ, for all his faults, you know, he tries. He hustles. He's with the team. You know, he's a kid. He got gross still, but 
he ain't eight year vet jogging down the court <laughs> for a hundred million. You know? Mm -mm. So yeah, they would ask for IQ in exchange for Jalen Brunson. That's why I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think so. So we're going to see though. We're going to see real soon, y'all. But Tom just opened up the cat bag for us. He just opened the box. You can't add somebody without subtracting somebody, he said. Then he quickly turned around to that and said, oh, but it's a long season. But that was, he already let it out the bag. They're getting ready to, to deal with these cats that he didn't really want in the first place. Okay. So <laughs> this is going to be fun to watch. So y'all, please enjoy your Monday. Be safe out there. You're going to watch the Knicks tonight against Sacktown at 730 at the MSG. Shalom.